Renault's third generation Twingo might look like a conventional city car, but under the skin, it offers a very different approach to the whole business of urban mobility. The decision to mount its engine at the rear makes it almost unique in this segment, freeing up extra interior space and making the car brilliantly nippy in crowded city streets. If that's just what you're after in an affordable little runabout, it's well worth a look. City cars need to be short, spacious and manoeuvrable and every designer worth their salt knows exactly how you achieve that by putting the engine in the rear. Now that will give you a shorter bonnet, extra interior space and a turning circle like a London taxi. It'll give you a car like this, Renault's clever third generation Twingo. Yes, you heard that right. The engine's here in the boot, or more accurately, under the boot floor, exactly like a Porsche 911, or more pertinently, in this case, the Smart for Two. Now, it's hardly a new concept sticking the oily bits back here. Uh, it was pretty popular as long ago as the 60s, when cars like the Hillman Imp and the Skoda 110 and the original versions of the Volkswagen Beetle and the Fiat 500 all sold in huge numbers with the engine slung out here at the rear. The modern era, though, has belonged to front-engine, front-wheel drive design. Manufacturers say that cars of this kind are safer and more spacious, but the real reason they favour them is that such vehicles are cheaper to produce. Only Daimler's dinky smart brand beg to differ on the subject. Proving at the turn of the century with the car that would become their two-seater for two model, that the concept could still work in an up-to-the-minute urban runabout. Smart were convinced that the configuration could be made to work with the properly sized four-seater city car too, and in 2008, they convinced Renault to join them in developing one. With a history of innovation dating all the way back to 1993, the French brand's smallest Twingo model would, it was felt, be well suited to such an unusual drive layout and claims to be in this finished third generation guise. It was launched here in the autumn of 2014. It was developed and is built alongside Smart's for four model, but apart from that car, there's no other four-seater compact vehicle on the market daring to be different in quite the same way. The question, though, is whether Renault's boldness in creating such a thing is going to pay off. Let's find out. So how does it feel to drive? Well, to be honest, if you weren't told beforehand that the engine is in the back, you probably wouldn't realise the fact, which is probably about as big a compliment as I can pay Renault regarding the Twingo's handling neutrality. Essentially, though the driving position is a little more commanding than most, in every other respect, on first acquaintance at least, this feels just like any other modestly powered city runabout or at least it does until you come to tightly twirl the wheel. In this car, the front wheels can turn to an impressive 45 degree angle. More typically, urban runabouts are limited to about 30 degrees. As a result, this car offers a super tight turning circle of just 8.59 meters, which is pretty much on par with a London taxi cab and over a meter tighter than any other rival can offer. It's enough to make a difference between making a successful U-turn or being caught in the traffic having to hurry a three-pointer. In terms of urban usability, it certainly gives this car a huge advantage. Slightly less endearing on city streets is the rather firm ride quality, which makes you wonder whether rear-engine layout has forced Renault into some compromises with damping. Now, the short wheelbase certainly wouldn't have helped here either. Still, large obstacles like speed humps don't upset the car too much and the faster you go, the better the suspension copes. Not that you will be going that fast in a mainstream Twingo. Here I'm using the engine most buyers will opt for, the 70 PS 1 litre SCE petrol unit. Three cylinders in size, as is common in this segment. 
but offering a mere 91 newton meters of pulling power, which explains the distinctly leisurely performance. Renault quotes a 14.5 second 0 to 62 mile per hour sprint figure en route to 94 miles per hour. But to be frank, this car feels a bit slower than that. Maybe it's the longer gearing you get from a long throw gear lever that you might first think feels strangely old hat in such a modern vehicle. Before you then remember that it has to marshal a linkage going right to the back of the car so it can be forgiven if it doesn't have a switch like action. If you really can't face going quite that slowly and feel prepared to pay a little more for your Twingo, then your Renault salesperson will quickly direct you towards the other mainstream engine on offer, the TCE 90 PS unit. It too is a three cylinder similarly sized petrol power plant, but here the addition of turbocharging makes quite a difference upping pulling power by nearly 50% and improving the 0 to 62 miles per hour time to a more acceptable and probably more achievable 10.8 seconds and that's en route to 103 miles per hour. Whichever engine you decide upon, you'll find that on the move there's a little more wind noise around the A-pillars and the mirrors than you might expect, though it is possible you simply notice that more because there's no engine sound coming from the front. On twisty roads, the light steering that you'll value so much around town lacks a bit of feel. But then that's a compromise most likely buyers will probably be happy to make. Go for the Pokier TCE model and you get a variable ratio setup that responds more quickly as you turn the wheel and requires less arm twirling through tighter bends. Like me, you might think of a typical modern city car as being a pretty space efficient thing. Then you come to this Mark III model Twingo and realize just how much more is possible. Here's a design so different from its conventional predecessor that you might wonder if a couple of generations have been skipped while you weren't looking. Now outside it's 10 centimeters shorter than before yet, somehow inside it's 33 centimeters longer. Now the bonnet's tiny and the turning circle's tighter than that of a taxi. Such are the benefits of Renault's decision to put the engine in the rear. Being rear engine defines this 3.5 meter long car in other ways too, with no oily bits at the pointy end. The front wheels can be pushed right out to the corners which improves stability, as well as increasing cabin space to such an extent that the interior of this Twingo is virtually as big as that of a Renault Clio Super Mini from the next class up. As a result, some have hailed this as the most significant small runabout that we've seen since the original Mini. You certainly wouldn't guess that on first acquaintance with this car if you approached the thing unfamiliar with the thinking behind its development. The styling is, after all, friendly but unremarkable with wide upper and lower front grilles, the higher one housing the large Renault Diamond logo, flanked by headlights that are topped with indicators and supposed to resemble eyelids and daytime running lights in the form of four luminous points. In profile, wide side protectors adorned with Twingo lettering guard against scratches in parking areas, while hidden rear door handles aim to give this car a coupe-like appearance. At the rear, wide shoulders which stretch from the sides are supposed to be a throwback to the Renault's old 5 turbo hot hatch, and a wide glass tailgate neatly integrates with the rear lights, stretching down to bumper level in the area where the engine is housed. Ah yes, that engine. We keep coming back to it, don't we? Its rear-mounted placement does, after all, define almost everything about this Twingo. The French maker isn't, of course, the first to put forward the concept of this configuration in a city car. The rival Volkswagen Up was also originally designed that way before the German manufacturer got cold feet at the last minute, worrying about just how expensive it would be to build in that format. Renault has got around that problem by sharing its development cost with Daimler Smart Brand, whose resulting for four model rolls down the same Slovenian production line as this Twingo. Cutting costs, though, was just one of the issues the two companies had to overcome in perfecting a four-seater city car design with the engine slung out the back.
Some potential buyers than you would worry about the safety and stability of a little hatch that was so configured. And virtually all likely buyers would probably assume that relocating the power source to the boot would severely compromise luggage space. In answer to these issues, the engineers have been ingenious, primarily in mounting the engine at a 49 degree angle. Now that not only stops it intruding into the cargo area, but also means that in a rear end collision, the mechanicals will be pushed beneath the passenger cell. Of course, making all of that work meant a fundamental redesign for the three cylinder petrol units Renault had in mind for this car. It's been worth the effort though, for the result is a powertrain placement so unobtrusive that this car actually has more interior space than its front engine predecessor, rather than less. And 12 centimetres of extra wheelbase too. For proof of that, you've only to lift the glass tailgate. In this case, if you were wondering, is the only available area for luggage storage. What room there is beneath the bonnet is taken up by a combination of radiator, fluid reserves and crash structure. And just as well then that it's remarkably roomy back here. Yes, the boot floor is quite high because the engine sits beneath it, but there's 188 litres of space on offer, or as much as 219 litres if you tilt the rear seat backs forward to their 90 degree angled cargo position. True, that second figure is still nothing like as much as you'd get in rivals like Fiat's Panda, Hyundai's i10 or the Volkswagen Up with its Seat and Skoda clones, but it's better than any other city car can offer. Where this Twingo really does have an advantage though is when you push forward the rear bench, here split 50-50. It isn't just the 980 litre capacity this reveals is nearly class leading, around 30% more than you'd get in say Peugeot, Citroen or Toyota city cars for example. Uh, it's the usability of that beautifully flat space that's emphasised by a unique feature in this class of car, a fold flat front passenger seat. And thanks to this, astonishingly long loads of up to 2.31 metres can be accommodated. Say an IKEA flat pack bookcase or a full size double base in a city car. Time to take a seat up front where you'll find yourself sitting comfortably and commandingly in a position that further aids the way that the short stubby bonnet makes parking placement so straightforward. You do though have to go beyond the entry trim level to get height adjustability for both seat and steering wheel. And as with many city cars, you might be irritated to find that that wheel can't be specified to alter for reach. Look through it though and you'll see a semicircular speedometer framing a digital display, clearly designed by Renault's development partner Smart. It's not to my taste, but it's clear and it's readable. Most eyes though will be drawn towards the centre console, particularly in a plush model fitted with the brand's clever Orlink 7-inch colour multimedia touchscreen. From there, as well as controlling the stereo and the sat-nav, there's the potential to get economy driving tips, use text-to-speak messaging and surf the internet to download a range of Renault-sourced apps for things like email, Facebook, Twitter, news and fuel prices. It's really very clever indeed. If you haven't paid the extra for the Orlink package, then your Twingo will instead come with the brand's clever Oran Go package, allowing almost any smartphone or tablet to be attached to the fascia via the universal fixing cradle. That has its own USB connection and power supply. You simply connect up your device and download the free Oran Go app onto it. Now, this will instantly give you access to navigation, extended communication, multimedia and trip computer functions. It'll even show a rev counter display, which is presumably why, rather frustratingly, one isn't provided within the instrument binnacle. All of this cleverness may be intended to distract your attention away from the fact that, as a whole, the cabin isn't as classy and solid as you'd find in, say, Volkswagen city car design. 
In compensation though, it is one you can trim far more individually to suit your own personal taste, thanks to these interchangeable panels that can be colour coordinated to match the upholstery, and even this removable 2.6 litre central storage box. Storage for small items is in fact quite plentiful, with three cup holders, three litre pockets in the front doors, and an optional two litre centre console between the front seats, and a 6.4 litre glove box. Here at the back, uh, plusher versions get a further 2.9 litre pockets in each rear door, and there's the option of nets that'll hold stuff in place in a 29 litre space you'll find under the rear seats. But what's it like if you're going to be sitting back here for any length of time? Well, for a start, there's only space for two people. Some city cars, Fiat's Panda, for example, offer the option of a third seatbelt, so three small children could be carried if necessary. But Renault doesn't. On the subject of your kids, they might find it a bit annoying to find that here, as with some other models in this class, you don't get proper wind-up windows, just these opening flaps. Having said all of that, there are important pluses to consider in terms of what's provided back here. For a start, access through the wide doors is very good. Yes, I do miss the sliding rear bench the Mark II model used to offer, but to some extent you no longer need it because thanks to a 13.6 cm increase in rear knee room, there's significantly more leg space than I was expecting. Provided you don't order the electric panoramic folding sunroof I have here, headroom is pretty good too. The mainstream Twingo models we're concentrating on here sit in a fairly narrow pricing band. We're talking from just under £10,000 to just under £12,000. That's because there are only two petrol engines on offer, both three-cylinder petrol units, and just this single five-door body style. You can, though, talk to your dealer about a six-speed twin-clutch EDC auto gearbox option. If, like most buyers, you choose the lower-powered SCE70 variant, then bear in mind that it doesn't come with a fuel-saving stop-and-start system, unless you stretch your budget to around £11,000 for the plush Dynamic version I'm trying here. And Dynamic is the only trim level available if you can find around £12,000 to get yourself the extra power of the single-turbo TCE90 model. As for the value proposition all that represents in the expanding city car sector, well, it must be difficult to create something evolutionally different in this segment, as Renault has done by giving this Twingo a rear-wheel drive layout, while still keeping prices in line with the more conformative front-driven models offered by rivals. Yet the French brand has had to try to do that, mindful that sticker price is everything in this part of the market, and that most buyers probably won't care about design cleverness that they can't see. So it is that pricing here occupies something of a middle ground in the city car sector. So, for example, if you compare it against the shared design we know either as a Volkswagen Up, a Skoda Citigo or a Seat Me, you'll find that this Twingo sits just above the Skoda and Seat options, but just below the Volkswagen. All three rivals stack up well against this Renault, but lack a bit of its joie de vivre. And you might expect a bit more of that if you turn your attention towards the other main share design in this segment. The one we know either as the Toyota Aigo, the Peugeot 108 or the Citroen C1. Do that and you'll find that this Renault is priced just above the Toyota, but may save you a little on the Peugeot or the Citroen. These three rivals have a slight running cost edge over the Twingo, but offer less seats folded luggage room. As usual, it'll come down to your buying priorities. There are, of course, other options you could consider. Ford's Ka and Fiat's 500 aren't really relevant rivals, as they only come with three doors, as does a Mini, unless you have a much bigger budget to spend on it. But don't worry, though, there are plenty of other alternatives. If you're happy to broaden your city car search, I'd think carefully before opting for something really cheap. Remember, after all, what you're going to have to live with. A Suzuki Alto really does feel bargain basement, but at least it'll be as affordable as this Twingo to run. 
Unlike, say, a Dacia Sandero or an MG3, also costlier to run than this Renault will be the entry-level petrol version of both Fiat's Panda and Hyundai's i10. So the small upfront saving both of these rivals can offer will be eroded pretty quickly. Now, better in this respect are Kia's Picanto and another city car built in Korea, Vauxhall's Viva, both of which manage a good showing on the balance sheet, along with a decent price saving over this Renault. Unfortunately, though, they also lack the technology and the personalization options that set this Twingo apart. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a Twingo that you really want, then you're probably going to be pretty pleased with your choice when you come to consider the standard specification Renault is offering across the range. After all, even the entry-level expression model gets the smartphone-operated OR and GO system. Simply download the provided free app onto your handset, pop it into the cradle, and you'll have access to a variety of navigation, multimedia and trip computer functions as well as Bluetooth phone connectivity and, of course, DAB or internet radio. More familiar standard items include LED daytime running lights, a rear spoiler, body-coloured finishing for the bumpers, door handles and door mirrors, a USB socket, powered front windows, remote centre locking and a speed limiter to help preserve your licence in roadworks or urban areas. It is a pity that you don't get a space saver rear wheel, just the tyre inflation kit under the passenger footwell. But on the plus side though, all models do get a useful folding front passenger seat, a unique feature in this class. All well and good, but most buyers will want to haggle a little harder or add the small incremental premium necessary to graduate up to a play trimmed model. That'll be a lot more comfortable to live with thanks to its standard air conditioning and height adjustment for both seat and steering wheel. More importantly, it's only from the play trim level that you get access to the personalization packs that really allow you to individualize your car. Before thinking about those, you might wonder whether it would be worth finding the extra for the top spec Dynamique trim that I have here, with its 15 inch alloy wheels, front fog lamps, pinstripe decals, powered heated door mirrors and cruise control. You could certainly justify those niceties by remembering that you need this trim level to get the efficient engine stop and start system and that it's only with this spec that you get the option to try what is probably this car's most desirable extra cost feature, the Orlink multimedia system with its seven inch color touchscreen. This gives you voice control, satellite navigation, a reverse parking camera, and a brilliant upgraded Archimedes stereo with 3D sound. Once you've made your trim choice, it's pretty much down to how you're going to personalize your Twingo. And as I've begun to suggest, Renault does give you plenty of options. You might like a body kit, extra side decals, a color coordinated exterior touch pack, or these larger 16 inch diamond cut alloy wheels. Plus there are interior touch and style packs to brighten up the cabin too. The French brand, though, thinks that many Twingo buyers are going to want to go quite a bit further than that with a desire for ultimate individualization that it aims to satisfy with what it calls personality packs. Now, these use bespoke colors and decals for a much more personalized approach across a choice of six different themes. Fashion, retro racer, party, techno, casual chic, and urban. Now, depending on your choice, you'll get cabin colored coordination for the interior upholstery, door cards, instrument and air vent surrounds, steering wheel inserts, and storage bins. And the same outside for the grill strips, side protection strips, and door mirror shells. There's no excuse then for ending up with a Twingo that won't feel special on your driveway. And once you've created that, you might want to consider a few finishing touches. Now, I'd certainly want the under rear seat stowage area with its net, possibly rear parking sensors and heated front seats, and probably the convenience pack, which adds climate control and auto operation for the headlamps and wipers. Now, I'd also want to consider this lovely electric panoramic fabric folding sunroof. 
On to safety. Now, you might be worried about the greater likelihood of skidding in slippery conditions with a rear-wheel drive car. Now, Renault says this won't be an issue thanks to the way that the Twingo's electronic stability control system has been configured. Nor will the rear engine configuration be a problem if you get hit from behind, as the unit's 49-degree mounting position means that in such a situation, it would be pushed beneath the passenger cell. Another Twingo design touch is the use of polymer in the bonnet and the front wings to provide better protection for pedestrians. As for more conventional safety considerations, well, you don't get curtain airbags. And perhaps one of the reasons why this car's Euro NCAP safety showing was restricted to a four-star result. Twin front and side airbags are included across the range, though along with the usual electronic assistance for braking and traction control. There's also a tyre pressure monitoring system and HSA hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Isofix child seat attachments are standard in the rear and there's also an option of an extra one in the front passenger seat. Top dynamic models also add a lane departure warning system to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway. A city car must be cheap to run, that's a bit of a given. And the Twingo SCE70 petrol model I'm driving here certainly is, returning 67.3 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 95 grams per kilometer of CO2. Now, if you own the equivalent version of the previous generation model, you'll find that this one will take you 14 further miles on each gallon, while putting out 35 grams per kilometer less of CO2. Unfortunately, though, you only get this strong showing with the priciest Dynamic version, thanks to its standard stop and start system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, stuck in traffic or perhaps waiting at the lights. Without it, the returns from the lesser SCE 70 Twingo variants fall to 62.8 miles per gallon and 105 grams per kilometer of CO2. It's easy to criticise Renault for not including the stop-start as a standard feature across the range, a move which would certainly have positioned this car as a more efficient choice in its class and moved it closer to the standard set by the segment-leading Persia 108 Citroen C1 Toyota Igo design. Now, having said all of that, other brands also charge extra for stop and start, and without this feature, this Twingo's fuel and CO2 returns are broadly the same as those you'd get from key rivals like Volkswagen's Up, Skoda Citigo, or Seat's Me. And a bit better than you'd get from an entry-level petrol-powered Hyundai i10 or Fiat Panda. Of course, I should point out that the SCE70 petrol unit I'm using here isn't the only engine in the Twingo range. There's also a pokier TCE90 petrol variant, which comes with premium pricing that does guarantee stop and start. That's still not enough to get this version's CO2 figures below the key 100 grams per kilometre mark. It manages 103 grams per kilometre. But it does return a credible 65.7 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. More of a downside in going for the TCE90 comes with its relatively high Group 8 insurance rating. In contrast, the SCE70 models are rated at either Group 2 or Group 3. As usual, drivers can play their part in reducing running costs, aided in this car by the clever Eco 2 feature that's been incorporated into the OR and GO app and OR-Link connectivity systems. Now, this gives your driving an Eco 2 rating along with current and average fuel economy figures. And in the TCE 90 model, there's also a built-in eco switch that alters the throttle mapping and air conditioning power to promote particularly fuel-efficient operation. Residual values look set to be better than the market average, according at least to industry experts. And the rest of the financial package looks reasonably good too. As with all Renaults, the Twingo comes with a four-year warranty which offers unlimited mileage cover in the first two years and then two further years of protection up to 100,000 miles, which is a distance most city cars are unlikely to cover in six years. 
servicing required every year or 12,500 miles should be affordable too. It's free for four years or 48,000 miles if you buy your car through the Renault Selections Finance Scheme. If you don't, there's a cheap extra cost package to cover the same period. And unlike many small cars, there's no sting in the tail lurking at 60,000 miles either, as the timing chain is maintenance free. In contrast, belt driven rivals will often require an expensive engine out procedure at this point in their lives. And finally, there's the peace of mind of knowing that four years roadside assistance cover is standard as part of the purchase. It's good to see Renault once again willing to do things a little differently. This company has, after all, been at its best when it tears up the rule book. It did that way back in 1993 in creating the original Twingo model and again does so here with that car's appealing third generation successor. The almost unique selling point in this case, the rear wheel drive layout, ought to be just another engineering solution, though a very intriguing one. In practice though, it's more than that. Conferring upon this car a different feel and giving it a more individual character that you can then further personalise to your heart's content. That specialness, that individuality is something you'll enjoy every day in ownership of this Renault. When marvelling at how easy it is to see out of, how simple it is to park and how tightly it can turn. In other words, it's more than just about stickers and colour coordination. The technology is supremely user-friendly too, smartphone savvy right across the range. And in summary, well, it's true that some rivals might be cheaper or slightly more efficient or a little better built. But try any one of those after living with the Twingo and you'll find the proposition of ownership a little mundane, a little conventional. And isn't life too short for that? Well, if you think so and you're buying in this sector, well, here's a great place to start.